Tonix Pharmaceuticals began a clinical study of its long COVID treatment. And with me is the CEO of Tonix, Seth Letterman, to explain about the study. You just really started it, uh, called the Prevail Study. And uh, what are you trying to accomplish with this? Long COVID is a big problem. And it is heterogeneous, meaning not all long COVID patients are the same. We are studying a group of long COVID patients, which we think can be as many as two thirds of them who have symptoms that overlap with fibromyalgia. So we're testing our drug, TNX102SL, which has already had a successful phase three study in fibromyalgia. We're testing that drug for its ability to help people with long COVID whose symptoms overlap with fibromyalgia. What are the symptoms that overlap? There are four major symptoms of fibromyalgia and they are the same as those of long COVID. And they are multi-site pain, that means pain in more than one place, okay. fatigue, which most people talk about as having low energy, mm -hmm. cognitive problems, which is often referred to as brain fog, right. and finally sleep problems. Well, I've even heard people say that they have trouble conducting meetings. Um, because of the brain fog associated with COVID. So when do you expect some data from the study? The interim analysis we expect will happen in the first half of 2023. Okay. And then we haven't guided to the top line of the full study. It's a double blind, randomized, placebo controlled study. We're targeting enrolling 470 patients. Mm -hmm. So we think that it will provide a pretty clear answer about the ability of our drug to help these people. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned how long COVID is, is such a big problem. I mean, some people have talked about being a global health issue. We just don't really know much about long COVID, even COVID, really. We don't, we've learned a lot, but there's still a lot we don't know, especially the long-term impacts. So how do you think you might be able to help with that? Well, long COVID is really, it's been called by health economists, a brewing tsunami in healthcare trouble. And that's been recognized by a variety of people. President Biden on April 5th issued an unprecedented executive memorandum organizing all of the branches of government to work on it and uh, calling for a national action plan. The uh, health economist at Harvard University uh, recently projected the long-term cost of long COVID at $3.7 trillion. The Brookings Institute uh, issued a report that was covered by the Wall Street Journal on August 25th that said it already accounts for 2 million unemployed people and $170 billion of economic impact. Goodness. So long COVID is a huge problem. The problem with long COVID is that it lasts so long. COVID is relatively short. People either get better or not, but it's short. Long COVID happens in 20 to 30% of people who recover from COVID and then persists for months, years, and possibly longer. Yeah, I guess we're waiting to find out how long some of this might last. Yes. What um, is the status with the fibromyalgia study? The, the fibromyalgia phase three study is a confirmatory phase three study since we already have one positive phase three study. Mm -hmm. So a positive result in that will mean that we can file the new drug application with FDA. So nice. it'll be it'll be in approximately a year from now, we, we will have the full information. Okay, and you mentioned one of the things with long COVID and fibromyalgia, well, is the multi-site um, pain. Is, and opioids is an issue with long COVID as well, right? Opioids is a big issue. Opioids is an issue for all people, all Americans. And I think we learned from the opiate crisis, it doesn't take a long treatment with opiates to become addicted. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we had seen before the COVID epidemic was fibromyalgia patients are frequently prescribed opiates. They don't work for fibromyalgia patients, but they do cause the long-term problems, the addiction, dependency, and the side effects. So we recently looked at a database of a large number of American patients and found out that long COVID patients are being treated with opiates, which is not a good idea. I think it means that the prescribing doctors don't understand that this type of pain does not respond to opiates. 
but we found that people with long COVID who have multi-site pain and fatigue, half of them were getting opiates. Mm. So we think that this is really setting up the United States for another opiate crisis, a rebound opiate crisis. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So we really have to get better treatment guidelines in place and more education out there. Yeah, and tonics as treatment, uh, if all the clinical studies come through, as you hope, could be an alternative to that. Yes, ours is a non-opiate. And we're very, that it's non-addictive, it has no recognized addictive potential. Our drug acts by improving sleep quality. Mm -hmm. And we believe, and we've shown in one phase three study, that improving sleep quality leads to, if you want to call it a trickle-down effect, and, and other of the symptoms of fibromyalgia improve. So that's what we're aiming for in long COVID. Okay, thank you so much, Seth, for coming in. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm.